Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. As we go behind the scenes to see how M&Ms are made, as well as an insight into the special techniques used in producing these delicious treats. Who doesn't love candies? Every event is a good excuse to have candies. From birthday celebrations to our all-time favorite award shows, or even a simple hangout with friends and family. For this reason, the candy industry makes a lot of money out of the billions of candies produced worldwide per year. And while there is a long list of the different candy variants, there are a few that everyone loves. An example of this is the popular M&M chocolate candy. These candies are loved and enjoyed by literally everyone, but not everyone knows how these special candies are made. Everyone loves being able to eat chocolate all year round. However, some are impossible to eat during the summer or in other warm climates. This is because chocolate bars tend to melt when exposed to heat. But thankfully, the Mars Chocolate Company was able to get ahead of this problem with the invention of M&Ms. Each chocolate ball is made up of two layers. First is the sweetened milk chocolate, and the second is the sugar coat that melts in your mouth. Apart from enhancing the sweetness of the chocolate, the hard sugar coating protects the chocolate core from melting under hot conditions, making it possible to eat M&Ms during almost any climate. M&M production happens in the company's factories all over the world. And despite the different production locations, all the chocolates taste the same because the workers make sure to follow the company's recipe strictly. The ingredients used in producing the chocolate candies include chocolate liquor, cocoa butter, whole milk, sugar, corn syrup, and other ingredients which serve as colorings and flavor enhancers. Before all these are mixed, they are individually prepared first, and the chocolate liquor is the first one on the list. This is a thick syrup made from cocoa beans, and it is the basis of the chocolate production. Because of the large number of chocolates the Mars Company produces annually, it is only logical and cost-effective for them to have their own cocoa farms. This way, they save money and use as many cocos as they need with minimal stress. At the appropriate time, the farmers on these cocoa plantations harvest the cocoa seeds and load them on the transport vehicle. They are then carried to the chocolate factory, where they are processed and turned into chocolate liquor. First, the cocoa beans are sent to laboratory technicians, who sort out the beans with good quality and separate them from the bad ones, which are ultimately discarded. Aw, oh, I'll take all those discarded beans. I can make some chocolate. The selected ones are put through a machine, which cleans them and separates them from unwanted materials like dried cocoa pulp, pod pieces, etc. Next, they are weighed and sent over to a large grill, where they are roasted to bring out the characteristic chocolate aroma we are all so fond of. Just imagine how good that smells. Mmm. You can say that the roasting process is one of the huge contributors to the taste and quality of the resulting chocolate, because if the beans are not roasted properly, this will reflect in their taste. After roasting for a while, the beans are left to cool before their shells are broken, and the shafts left from this process are removed as well. But since these shafts, which are referred to as nibs, are very valuable in the chocolate manufacturing process, they are kept aside. The nibs and the cocoa beans are taken in huge containers to a hydraulic press that extracts their cocoa butter and fat content. The combination of these two gives a paste-like mixture, which is quite similar to ordinary butter. This paste is extracted and kept aside while the remaining chocolate liquor undergoes further processing. The chocolate liquor, which is basically unsweetened or dark chocolate, is mixed with the cocoa butter mixture. And this is the secret to the smooth texture that chocolates are known to have. The newly produced chocolate mixture is heated and cooled several times to ensure that all the butter dissolves and mixes with the rest of the chocolate without leaving any lumps. After the mixture has been left to cool, milk and sugar are added in large quantities and the mixture is stirred again. At this point, the sweet creamy milk chocolate is formed and now ready to be molded into small balls that serve as the shape of regular M&M candies. Nom 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 nom. Are you ready for this next part? 
The chocolate mixture is pumped into a large depositor machine built with a nozzle. From this nozzle, it is distributed on a flat and wide molding sheet, which is built like a large tray with several holes in the shape and size of an M&M chocolate candy. This molding sheet is an inbuilt conveyor system that causes the sheet to rotate. So as the chocolate is being poured into it, the shaped chocolates fall from the sheets onto another conveyor, which transports them from the depositing area to a cooling area. Here, the warm, semi-solid chocolate is allowed to cool down and harden. After the chocolates have cooled down and hardened, they are transported to the next station, where they are coated with sugar. This next phase is called panning. It's done in a hollow machine equipped with several sprays, each connected to a container filled with liquid candy. This liquid candy has been pre-made by heating sugar with corn syrup, and it is sprayed on the chocolates at intervals. The large surface area of the machine allows for every chocolate ball to be uniformly coated with the liquid candy, and the chocolates are covered in at least five coats of this liquid. Between each spray, there are time intervals, which allow for one sugar coating to dry and harden before the next is applied. After the chocolates have been sprayed to satisfaction, they are covered in one last coating of syrup, which contains coloring as well as sugar and corn syrup. In each spraying batch, the final syrup includes a different color corresponding to one of the different M&M colors. Since there is more than one panning machine at the chocolate factory, different batches are sprayed at a time, so all different colors of candies are produced at once, which speeds up the production time. Next, the freshly sprayed candies are exposed on a flat conveyor for a few minutes, thus allowing their shells to harden before they are passed through the next phase. At this point, all the different colored chocolate candies are combined into a mixture containing red, yellow, blue, green, brown, and orange candies, and are transferred to a special machine that gently inscribes that classic M on each one without breaking or cracking their delicate sugar coatings. As many as 2.6 million candies are engraved per hour, and over 100 million daily. That is crazy! 2.6 mil per hour? Imagine how fast that machine is moving! After the branding process, the candies are ready to be packaged and are sent off to the packaging machine, which weighs them first before pouring them into branded M&M bags. However, these candies aren't sorted blindly. In each bag, there are exactly 25% orange, 25% blue, 12.5% brown, 12.5% yellow, 12.5% red, and 12.5% green candies. A sample of each color is inspected by color specialists who ensure that they are all the right colors and are also responsible for monitoring the color trends of all the candies. Well, I'm colorblind, so I guess I can't have this position. Finally, the chocolate-filled bags are sealed using heat, and each bag is packed into M&M boxes, which are transported to retail stores worldwide. The Mars Company is one of the biggest chocolate producers in the world and is responsible for some of the biggest chocolates ever produced. These include Snickers, Mars, Twix, and of course, M&Ms, among a few others. All these chocolate candies have been a part of the journey of every chocolate lover. And even after being around for many decades, they are still widely sold worldwide. However, M&Ms have special characteristics of their own which are unlike any other Mars chocolate candies. For one, the different colors of these tiny round chocolates make them fun to eat, and the fact that they can be eaten all year round is a huge plus. What's your favorite thing about M&Ms? And which are your favorite M&Ms to eat? I like those yellow peanut. I'll take some filled with almonds. Leave your answers in the comments section below.